Hey, I know I've been gone for a while, but isn't there an intro that's supposed to happen here? Yeah, whoever picked the fucking movie does the intro. Got it. Your goddamn intro, bullshit artist. All right. Like this, Jay? I don't know if I'm doing the podcast right, Jay. Is this right? I don't know if I'm doing the podcast right, Chris. Mike, like this? I don't know if I'm doing it right, Mike. I'm Big Paul, and I'm back to talk about the Greasy Strangler tonight on... Big Big Greasy Mania! You guys guys said Big Movie Mania, right? I said Big Greasy Mania. Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Welcome to B-Movie Mania, the show where we talk about movies that uh, Chris is not very happy about. (laughs) Who's talking right now? Who is this? That is a trend. I'm Paul. I used to be on this show. Uh, and I'm back this Welcome evening back. for one night only. Thank Full you. Full time. Nope. Well, Paul, you have been on multiple times this season. Well, this is true for a little, you know, things here and there. But I'm hosting tonight. I'm hosting. Oh. It's like uh, when Adam Sandler comes back to SNL and everybody says, oh, we're, we're falling in love with him all over again. It's just like that. Yeah. It's just except, like that. Yeah. Except mm-hmm. not quite as many um, successful movies as adam sandler but what are you gonna do (laughs) but i am gonna die and you wrote a song about me in the future who did good job paul thank you (laughs) mike big mike hayes yes joining me uh this (laughs) evening (laughs) per usual is big mike hayes you three can fuck off tonight oh wow (laughs) big jason hulls i thought free drinks were included in this podcast they are. They are. Free drinks. As long as you free, make it yourself. Free drinks. Free drinks. Drinks. Free drinks. Free drinks. Free drinks. We must have free drinks. Free drinks. We must have free drinks. We must have free drinks. Free drinks. Free drinks. And big, crazy Chris Hudson. Check my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyone? Anyone can check your cheeks? Anyone? Anyone? They're, they're free for checking. Yeah, baby. Mm. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, the boys are quoting a few things from... The movie that we're going to be reviewing tonight, which I picked, it's a film called The Greasy Strangler, which uh, if you haven't watched it yet, boy, I really think you should fire up your Amazon Prime right now, hit pause on this and come back. (laughs) Uh, You might want to wait till after this to decide if you want to watch it. (laughs) That's true. Actually, this is one where maybe maybe you shouldn't watch it. Maybe you should just listen to us and uh, form an opinion based on that. I... I, I I disagree with Mike on that because then we're going to spoil all the good lines because no we're, we're no. going to quote it a lot. It's okay. Well, yeah, I, I don't think wh- whether or not anyone's opinion of this movie is what it is. I don't think we can spoil this movie, no matter what we say about <laughs> this movie, no matter what lines we quote, no matter what little clips of audio get edited into this episode. Nothing could spoil the experience of watching this movie. Agreed. That's, that's true. That that's is true. true. Yeah. Bullshit artist. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, let me let me do it. I can do oh, okay. it. Okay. All right. Horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. Drinks every time someone says bullshit artist tonight. Bullshit artist. Speaking of drinks, uh, guys, I, I bought myself a special drink for this episode yeah? to celebrate watching Greasy Strangler. What is it? Um it's it it's a pretty greasy drink, I'd say. It's a it's a uh, a Bud Strawberry Sparkling Margarita, Ooh, a, a 22 boy. ounce, 25 ounce can. <clears throat> it just is bright pink like the clothing the people in this movie wear. 
and uh, it's gonna taste wow. like absolute horse shit. You, sir, are a horse shit artist. I call bullshit on that. <laughs> so, see, see, I thought you were gonna you were gonna grab Malort because, much like Malort, this movie is the movie you make your friends watch <laughs> to, to troll them. That's fair. It's, a, it's the cinematic Malort. I'm just drinking a big cup of grease. <laughs> yeah, Mike, did you add any, any grease to that uh, drink of yours yeah, over there? Pour, watch, watch the... You can hear it just... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Too much grease is bad for you. I read it in a fitness magazine someone left on the bus. That's horse shit! You're a bullshit artist! Well, I got... Oh. I don't know if you can oh. see. I got uh, something I like to call the Big Paul. It's uh, some vodka and uh, some Calypso lemonade mixed with just uh-huh. a dash of uh, Wild Cherry Pepsi for that sort of dirty car wash look. <laughs> it, do, it does look like you have the runoff from a car wash. Yeah, yeah that's the point. It's the big Paul right there. So. I love it. That's a good themed drink. Yeah. Oh, guys, I, if I finish this fucking strawberry by the end of it, I'm going to die. <laughs> this is <laughs> not good. Uh, oh. Let's do some quick takes. Quick takes! Jay, hit me with your quick take for the Greasy Strangler. Yeah, it's uh, Napoleon Dynamite for perverts. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is a Rudy Tootie Disco Cutie nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Chris? Oh, well, for, well uh, this, <laughs> this movie, if I may quote it again, this movie is like a big brown finger. <laughs> and that it's it? pointing right at me. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, yeah, I totally agree with Jay. This, has the to- this feels like Napoleon Dynamite had a nightmare. And what was uh, what did Big Ronnie say something about? He's the... Uh, <laughs> Spider-Man of Cocktown? <laughs> yes. I'm the Spider-Man of Cocktown. <laughs> yes, he, he does say, say that. that. Mike? Paul, this is the greasiest movie I've seen since John Waters make Divine suck down a dog turd. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> oh, God. Wow, yes, accurate. Yeah. Paul, what about you? Um, wow. Oh. I think I will just say bullshit artist so that somebody out there has to drink one more time. It's fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Paul. I'm going to say. Wait, Paul, gonna... what, what was that, Paul? What was Bullshit that? artist. What? What? What do you say? <laughs> Bullshit artist. Bullshit artist. I, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm, this is. Very, this is very embarrassing. I. What? What did you say? <laughs> Horseshit <laughs> artist. <laughs> <laughs> You're officially the world's biggest bullshit and horseshit artist. I, I'm just apologizing ahead of time because I've just taken like my third sip of the straw strawberryita <clears throat> shit. Yeah, and you're gonna have to edit out a bunch of me gagging. Nope, oh no, that's God. all standing. Yes. No. Well, that's all right, Mike, because he's already gonna have to edit out a lot of me gagging when I think of certain scenes from this movie. No, absolutely not. This is a gross movie. We're keeping it in. I don't think I've ever actually vomited in my mouth while watching a movie. Did that happen? So, twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I don't want you to so, tell us just so yet. So, thanks, Paul. But, but when we get to the parts where maybe, you know, that did happen, oh. let us know, okay? Yeah, well, you'll probably hear me vomiting again. I'll drink every time it ha- you tell me it happened. <laughs> Big Ronnie and his son, Braden run a disco walking tour. Um, can someone, Chris, maybe, do you want to help me with exactly what goes on? Uh, with oh, these boy. disco walking tours? All right. Well, as you can probably tell, um, Big Ronnie and Big uh, Braden are, uh, well, they're bullshit artists. Mm-hmm. You're a bullshit artist. <clears throat> <clears throat> and they give, uh, quote unquote, <laughs> tours uh, for f- very famous big disco landmarks, like where Earth, Wind, and Fire may have stayed one night mm. or lived mm-hmm. and where other disco artists may have come up uh, i think the Bee Gees, one of the bgs came up with one of their songs in the doorway of this clearly abandoned convenience store so they are telling stories and trying to make some money in their bright ass pink 
shorts and shirt, <laughs> which, may I add, is about the most clothing you will see on them for, through most of the movie. <laughs> on uh, our little disco walking tour that we got going on here with Ronnie and uh, Braden, Braden happens to uh, meet and sort of interact with a nice young lady on the disco tour named Janet. What's your name? I'm Janet. Talking to the customer and help down with his shorts. Does anyone else, by the way, recognize Janet from anything else? Mike, I thought maybe you might. I, I, uh, I did once I looked her up. Uh, no, I mean, I, uh, uh, Elizabeth Zarazzo? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, you know her from the riveting uh, TV series Southland on TNT. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Not what I was thinking of. Oh, you might know her from uh, the TV series Vida. No. Oh, or oh, she's in the movie, uh, uh, the movie Lemon, which I've okay. seen. Um, Not what I'm going for. Still. <laughs> oh shit! She's in Eastbound and Down, baby. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stevie's yeah, 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 wife yeah, yeah, yeah. in Eastbound and Down. If you're a fan of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> And she's great in this movie. I mean, you want to talk about yeah. an actor taking... Ri- how, like, what happens when you read the script and you go, yeah, okay, sure. I don't know how they got anyone to say that <laughs> about the script. Um, they did. But, yeah. Damn it. So, Braden and Janet kind of seem to, um, you know, de- develop a bit, of a bit of a crush on each other. Well, he's Start, a cheesy uh, old cornball, and she likes it. He's a cheesy that's, old that's cornball. He He's a cheesy old cornball. You cheesy old cornball. Yeah, that's what I am. I'm a cheesy old cornball. Chris, he's a cheesy old cornball. <laughs> that's what he is. He's he's a cheesy old cornball. He's a cheesy Paul, Paul, old cornball. Paul, you're a cheesy old cornball. Yeah, I'm just a cheesy old cornball. <laughs> Paul, you actually sound like Braden. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> Thank you. We got three other guys on this walking tour, and they really, for sure. some reason, <laughs> really want free drinks. I thought free drinks were included in this tour. No, there's no free drinks. I don't know where you got that idea. Just the water is fine. There's a lot of chanting in this movie and a lot of, you know, repetitive lines. So. Yes. Yeah. Free drinks, free drinks, free drinks, free drinks. Free drinks, 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 no, free drinks. I would stop short of calling it repetitive humor, but... It is not repetitive humor, but... But the guys from The Walking Tour, they don't, unfortunately, get their free drinks, so they have to kind of fend for themselves, and a little later on in the evening, they're trying to buy some chips... And uh, oh, Jesus, Jay, something rather, I, I guess, uh, unexpected happens to them. You want to go into that a little bit, maybe? Sure. They unexpectedly find themselves in one of the most annoying scenes in film history. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. That's your opinion. Why is that? Why do you say that? I, how could I not? It's it's so repetitive and just like like one guy's trying to say potato, but he says Porto over and over again. What are these chips made from? Potato. Sorry, but what? Potato. I don't understand. Can you say that again? Potato. Please, one more time. Potato. <laughs> Porto. And over and over, like over and over and over oh, and over God. again. What did he say? Like, what? Porto. 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 It's like that bit I did with Paul earlier about bullshit artists where I said, wait, excuse me, what, what, what did you say? But for well, two and a half minutes. Yeah, but that, yeah, for two and a half minutes. So, yeah, so that's going on. While they're doing that, Ronnie, who is, or Big Ronnie, excuse me, um, slathered head to toe in grease. Hey, hey, hang, hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Let me, okay. Jay, I think you're about to say that Ronnie is the greasy strangler. But I, in, the, yeah. in the very first scene, what? though... Big Ronnie tells Brayden when Brayden comes to wake him up with coffee and they're talking about putting grease in the coffee and why does no one put grease in coffee? Right. Big Ronnie, out of nowhere, just says... Hey, you probably think I'm the greasy strangler. He was Big, joking. You know, Brayden... Yeah, Brayden calls bullshit artists on him. And he's like, yeah, yeah. no. So, I mean, he just, you know, he brings it up just to let his son know... But he calls what? Really he calls strangler. what on him? Bullshit artist. <laughs> hey, I call bullshit on that. He does. Okay. 
<laughs> but then later, Ronnie is covered head head to toe as the Greasy Strangler. That's not Ronnie. <laughs> what? Yeah, and, that's uh, the Greasy that Strangler. Ronnie. That's yeah. He yeah. is Jay, the Greasy Strangler. Missed- no, you missed the beginning of the movie then. You missed the first scene. You must have skipped ahead. The literal, Literally, the first scene of the movie, he says, I'm not the Greasy Strangler. So obviously... You know, it, it might be the only bit of subtext in this movie when he says, I'm not the Greasy Strangler. <laughs> because he, he's lying. He says, it so, he says it so much in the movie. He totally denies it. Well, I mean, he, he, will, he will say unprompted, hey, Mike, I'm not the Greasy Strangler either. So All right. Hey, guys, guess yeah. what? I'm not the Greasy Strangler, so. Mm-hmm. Are you, what are you saying, Jay? Are we the Greasy Strangler? Both no, I'm saying somehow? Ronnie is the big Ronnie is the Greasy Strangler. He <laughs> said he's not! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. All right, well, we, let's, let's agree to disagree here. A man covered in grease that looks exactly like Big Ronnie. Looks not like the him. He's covered in grease. And he slams the guy's head into the glass machine of the of the vending machine. The vending machine. Tell me and you don't ki- like this next death. Tell me you don't like this next. <laughs> death. What, the, the strangling? No, it's before the, the punch. Oh, the the, yeah, he punches another guy's head in. <laughs> like it's a deflated <laughs> kickball. Yeah. It sinks. <laughs> oh, my God. Tell me. Tell me, Jay. Look into my eyes and say, I didn't like that. No, I did like that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> There's, a lot in the, There's a lot in this movie I did like. Uh, I don't know if I gave you the impression that I hate it, but... I didn't get any impressions from the uh, quick takes, which is good. I kind of appreciate that. that so. And that greasy strangler suit is nasty looking. Yes, he's covered. In, it is. He's covered in some sort of grease or oil. It's it's some nasty uh, Carl's Jr. backroom shit. Really, it's not good. Hey, Chris, yeah. can can you yeah. describe in detail the next shot that they cut to? I was just I was oh, just about to say oh, what is the process oh, right, the car wash. by the which car wash. the greasy strangler degreases oh. himself. Oh my god! <laughs> well, he runs himself through a car wash. Of course. <laughs> no, but like, how does the director choose to to <sighs> convey this to us? By showing us Big Ronnie in a car wash getting cleaned off. Right. <laughs> so he's like ah, but, and then and then it, well, you get a close up of his head and his chest, and then it cuts to a full body shot. And you see the amazingly huge. You see his big Ronnie penis. You see his big Ronnie, yeah. and it's massive. Oh my god! It's just hanging down, which also goes in. It's really quick. You don't really see it in the first. I mean, you gotta you gotta be looking for it to see it in the first scene. Um, but there's another scene when Braden comes to wake up his dad, Big Ronnie, and he's just got an, just a ragingly huge erection <laughs> under the covers. It's, it's, oh, God. All right, guys, I know you guys want to talk about this dragon dong that Big Ronnie's got. <laughs> okay, but hold on for a second, Mike. You see this uh-huh. happen. You see him in the car wash, and you see him yeah. degreasing himself. And by the yeah. end, he's, he's pretty clean. Does that yeah. not look like Big Ronnie to you? I mean, maybe it's Big Ronnie. Just I no, but he said literally the first scene, guys. Maybe you missed it. He said, "I'm not the greasy strangler." All right, or we'll, 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 agree, we'll move on and we'll agree to disagree well, on that one. Okay? Yeah, no kidding. Big Ronnie is a proven liar. Okay, and we'll get into that. He's a, bull, later. He's a bullshit artist. Yes. Okay, I'm not the greasy strangler, but you're a bullshit artist. Yeah, I kind of am. <laughs> so Braden takes, uh, we get a scene here of Braden taking Janet out to dinner. And uh, this scene is important because he tells her all about Ricky Prickles. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is definitely going to, again, going to come into play a little <laughs> bit later. But you can tell that Braden and Janet definitely got a thing going on. You know, they're, they're you might say they're courting each other. It's nice, you know, it's nice to see these two lovebirds sort of... Uh, Discovering each other for the first time. I I, I like the sweet. quieter scenes in this movie with with those two. Ricky Prickles though has these abs that that is like <laughs> a a vacuum sucked bag of sausages. It is just it is. Who wouldn't lose? I was drooling over Ricky Pickles when he described Ricky Pickles. Ricky Pickles. I'm like. I would suck the shit out of those sausage abs, baby. Grease them up. Let me suck them down, baby. It was like punching a vacuum-packed bag of roasted sausages. Then he made me do abdominal crunches with them. Wait a minute. You like to have abs with grease? 
<laughs> Maybe you are uh, the greasy strangler. Well, well, well hold on. <laughs> no, Jay, who, he said, Mike who, said who, he's not, not the greasy strangler. I'm not saying I want greasy abs. I'm saying No, 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 no. you said you would suck the gre- greasy abs. No, I, All right, okay, I okay, think okay. if you rewind the tape, you'll the point is, hear it Paul, Yeah, Paul, rewind the tape. I would suck the shit out of those sausage abs, baby. Grease them up. <laughs> let me suck them down, baby. See? I don't have greasy abs. I hate them. Mm-hmm. You would probably <laughs> also eat a hot dog dipped in grease. Okay, uh, yeah, hold baby. on, hold on. The point here, the point is, the point is, because Braden and Janet are out to dinner, Big Ronnie is uh, left to, to fend for himself for dinner, so... Uh, Chris, what's where? Where does he go to uh, get a little dinner? Well, he he goes to the old hot dog stand. Yeah, and Just, or, orders himself a, a a dog. I assume everything you know, goes fine. Um, no, because, uh, I mean, the guy gives him his famous, uh, chili cheese dog, Ugh. but, uh, Big Ronnie is just like, it's, it's not greasy enough. There's not enough grease on this hot dog. I need this dog to have some grease on it. So when I eat it, the grease will lubricate my throat. Sir, I cannot do that. Sir, I cannot do that. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, because he'll... <laughs> If he does, if he puts grease on that hot dog, he could lose his license. Yeah, I and, cannot I mean, do that. I, and he, he cannot do that. He cannot. And he cannot stress this enough. I could. I repeat, I could lose my license. He will lose his license. Right. If he does and, that. you know, we should also point out when he's at a, this hot dog vendor, it's not broad daylight or in the evening with people around. It's no, in no. the middle of nowhere yeah. in the city in, <laughs> in a dark street under the only street light. And there's a guy selling hot dogs. Yeah. And and this, and you guys wanted me to tell you, this is the first part where I threw up in my mouth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <For> what? Drinking. <laughs> From what? Well, uh, well, let me take a drink real quick, Paul. Yep. Take your time. Hmm. Oh, uh, hey, by the way, by the way, guys, you, you probably think I'm the greasy strangler. Yeah, no. he admits it I'm, again. I'm, but I'm not. I'm not. Um, but what he does is he goes to the, uh, I guess, the grease catch on this hot dog stand, and it's just a big old vat of nasty looking <laughs> That's what did it? bacon grease. That's what did it to you? And he takes that hot dog and just scoops it right in there, like, uh. deep down, and it's smothered in this <laughs> nasty old grease. I was like, oh, oh God. Uh, okay. I, I guess I have a better tolerance for, you know, a, a grease shot than you do. I, I thought it was fine. The, yeah. My one weakness, if I were a superhero, my one weakness would be disgusting, rancid, spoiled food. Like anything nasty like that gets me every time. Hmm. Interesting. Sort of tonight. Why, but that's but that is my uh, that's my weakness. It's my kryptonite. Did anybody else get a little bit of a uh, hard on watching that? Yeah. No. <laughs> a Jimmy Hart vibe from the hot dog vendor. <laughs> no. I can well, see it. I see it now. Yeah, I, totally I see got that, a yeah. I got a uh, Harry Shearer kind of uh, vibe from him. What? Mm, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spinal Tap. I, I can see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought uh, Mike. This is weird because I was just watching. An interview uh, on CBS with Spinal Tap. They're having their 35th anniversary right now. And the oh, guy doing yeah. the interview wow. was, um, oh, what's his name? Harry. He's on the CBS morning show. He took my picture when at my Taco Bell wedding. But I thought you were talking about him. <laughs> 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 shout out to Harry. Yeah, Thanks shout out to him, Harry. Buddy. Anyway, um, well, can we talk about uh, the next when the Greasy Strangler strikes again? Yes, later on that night, the uh, Greasy Strangler strikes again. <laughs> Jay, who is his victim this time? The poor hot dog vendor, Jimmy Hart. He, yeah, Jimmy Hart. He goes home and uh, who goes, goes into his camper <laughs> to take a big old greasy dump. And oh, as you would what? probably want to do, you open up the window. You know, because it's going to be directly behind him. So, how big is it? How big? Huge! It's a huge window. So he opens the window and then drops his pants. You see his ass. Yeah, as he sits down, and uh, God damn it! All the greasy strangler has to do is pretty much walk up to that window and choke him from behind. And when he does, his eyes comically (laughs) pop out of his head. God damn it! (laughs) And the greasy strangler cooks him up and eats him. Because why not? Now, now my, my big issue with this, this is the most unrealistic scene in the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the issue. <laughs> because, well, be, because this whole time, Big Ronnie, 
who's not the greasy strangler, but if he were, he's always <laughs> complaining about he's always complaining about how this food's not greasy enough. Right. And when he cooks those eyeballs and eats them, they're not very greasy. Oh, I mean, come they're on. They're like as dry as a bone. They're, and so it kind of took me out of the movie a little bit because they <laughs> have set these rules. And now he's eating eyeballs without a lot of grease. Maybe he just wiped them on like, like any part of his body. I, I, I do want to, to say to you guys, uh, specifically you, Chris, because I know, <laughs> I assume you're familiar with the fact that eyeballs are filled with the delicious grease. So oh, when you, you know when you bread them and you fry them, yeah, you know I forgot about that. I you put them in. You got, I mean, you guys have all eaten. You've eaten a fish yeah. eye, a goat no, eye, a pig no. eye. You know, whatever. You you, you 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 take it, you pop it in your mouth, and it pops There's like a, a gusher grease, in your mouth. It's a yeah. gusher. Yeah. And so you've probably actually done that, haven't you? <laughs> what have you ha- have you actually eaten an eyeball from anything? I. I am not the greasy strangler, Paul. I don't know why. <laughs> not what I said. You are trying to say it. Not insinuating oh, anything. Oh, have I have I eaten an eyeball? Yeah, I've had an eyeball. Oh God, <laughs> that's awful. To be honest, out out of character, out of whatever bit is happening that I don't know about. Uh, it, yeah, it's gross. I don't like anything that pops in my mouth. A no. gusher is borderline oh, gross. God. <laughs> that is awful. Because it because it pops. You you fucking eat like a fish eye, and you <gasps> you you, cho- you chomp down on it, and it just fucking comes. <sniffs> oh, it's that's just, way worse it's just, than. Anything we're talking about tonight. That's horrendous. Right, to, get us, to get us back on track, can we talk about the soundtrack for a moment? Yeah, let's talk about the soundtrack. Uh, and how did they get fucking chipmunks to record this? <laughs> <laughs> Alvin hasn't had shit to do for a while. Uh, Ever since true. Chip Rex, he hasn't had shit to do. So Let's play a little clip right here. Oh my god, the music was just so just... You know what? It fits the movie. I'll say that Yeah. Much. It fits oh, it, the movie. It really does. It's... <sighs> it sounds... In, it intentionally sounds like... Like a fucking seventh grader's making music. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god, it sounds incompetent, but you know it's in, you, you know it's intelligently done. Right. Like notes sound like the wrong notes are being played sometimes, and all that kind of stuff. But it really fits the aesthetic of the film, and it's it's very well done. You okay? It, this bun strawberita is fucking gross. <laughs> There's not, not enough grease. I'm going to have to go get a beer at some point. I'm almost out of my uh, Big Paul car wash drink here. Oh. But uh, but until then, until then, uh, oh, we got Big Ronnie here who starts to make his own olive oil in his bedroom, <laughs> <laughs> which I assume is some sort of grease-related thing. Uh, it's, and don't forget, Paul, it's extra virgin. <laughs> And of course he does it in the in the buff in the nude. Well, everything is in the nude. He's got this dragon torpedo dick. He that- does. And let me ask you, like was that a ball hanging like was that his ball in one in the shots or was is there like a growth off the side of it? <laughs> Because there was some weird Jay, stuff going on down here's there. Here's all I know. He spent Ugh. some time with Michael Jackson in the 80s, so that could be anything. <laughs> that's true. Well, yeah, that's that's well, not, well yeah, it was not the a Michael Jackson look alike. Wait, can we can we talk about this next scene? Because like I have in my notes, like I don't even know how to write notes about this next scene. What scene yeah. you talking about? It's with pig nose or oinker. The oinker? Oh, oinker, yeah, yeah. I skipped over yeah, some yeah. oinker stuff, but go ahead. Yeah, like, okay, so they're, they're sta- Big Ronnie and Braden are standing on the street, and oinker walks up, and he's this guy with a, with a pig nose over his yeah. nose. And yeah. they keep talking about the horror house. Horror. And, like, yeah. the dad wants to go. And they don't want him to, but he insists on going. And it, it, it's just like this whole, it's this m- madness of this guy with a pig nose and eyeliner talking to them. Yeah. I just I had such a hard time it, following that hey, scene. Jay, it's so weird. Jay, Jay, he has a name. It's Oinker. Oinker. So I don't, I don't know why you're disparaging the man. Oinker, where did you get those shoes? I'm renting them and I'm absolutely loving it. Apologies for skipping over some of the gross stuff that has like nothing to do with the plot. But if you want to no, jump in, go, uh, go, go I, right I will, ahead. I will quickly gross everyone out real quick. 
Uh, <laughs> Janet comes over for dinner. Uh, <laughs> Big Ronnie decides to make the olive oil. Uh, Brayden and Janet have sex, which was what Paul was quoting at the very the intro of the movie. Was what he was quoting of Brayden having sex like this, like this, Janet. I don't know if I'm doing it right, Janet. But then the next morning, Janet's peeing, and Ronnie just comes in <laughs> and watches her pee while he just brushes his teeth with nothing. There's no toothpaste. Well, He's hold just on. He back said and he, forth. No, he said, you do. You just do your thing. I won't look. Yeah, but he looked. <laughs> Everything okay? Yeah. I wanted to watch you go pee. I got to say, this is my favorite line of the movie, though. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> well, when she says, peeing is private, and he responds, Yeah, usually. But I got teeth to brush. <laughs> yeah, and and I will argue this is actually a pivotal scene in the yeah, film. It because okay, this, yeah, it is. I thought it this was. This is yeah. where it gets creepy, and she doesn't seem to be into it. But then he winks at her. He, she's like, "I thought you said you wouldn't watch." And then he just keeps brushing his teeth, and then winks at her, and then she winks back, and she that back. is a fucking pivotal moment in this disgusting film. Can we talk about uh, Braden's giant dragon dong? What is it? Yeah, it part. is pretty big. Yeah, you're right. Go ahead, Chris. Who, Brayden? I want, I want, I want de- a detailed description of Brayden's schlong. Won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> we are all over the place with this plot right now, Mike. Oh you, you're saying we're going, we're not going out of order. The oinker thing yes. is before the peeing. Go oinker. You want to talk about oinker? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just pointing out that we. Never mind. Mike's the greasy strangler. I, I am not. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, Braden is. I mean, he's worried that Big Ronnie, his dad, is going to steal his girlfriend. Which, sure. You know, he's for, a smoothie. For good reason. For good reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, he's a smoothie. He's he he knows ladies. Just don't be a smoothie with her. I really like this girl. You can be a smoothie with women. Bullshit artist. You know, as as big as Big Ronnie's giant dragon dong is, Braden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what Got was it, that, Jay? What was that sound? Like, it's for as lucky as endowed as Big Ronnie is, there's a reason they don't call him Big Brayton. <laughs> I would say, I would say, Jay, Big Ronnie isn't endowed. He's in wow. Oh, dude, we're skipping so much of this plot right now. I just, I just want to talk about Brayton's dick. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's what Chris. You skipped over like five plot points to talk about that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm yeah. excited to talk about his dick and the phone sex. The phone sex doesn't happen for. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Who gives a shit? But I just mean the phone sex is way down this line. We've got Oinker's situation let's, right yeah, here. We got literally. Oinker to deal with here, but let's just back up for a second. Listen, Big Ronnie. <laughs> we, got, we got we got rating time to get to, guys. We got rating time. Rating time. <laughs> no, not rating time. <laughs> Big Ronnie starts to get a little jealous here, okay? And he threatens to kick Brayden out of the house. Well, he just wants to get a little closer to Janet, get to right. know her a little bit. Right, because you know? yeah. he's a smoothie. He just wants to get to know her, so he puts on his best going out outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Mike, where does Ronnie take Janet? This is hands down my favorite scene of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he takes her to a, a nice disco club where they have fifteen dollar creamy mm. cocktails. <laughs> I'm expecting to run up a formidable bar bill tonight. Fifteen bucks for a luxuriously creamy pussy ass daiquiri, motherfuckers. And you see them on the dance floor. How how would you describe <laughs> Big Ronnie's dance moves? And it, first of all, we should talk about his outfit. No, outfit. What does his outfit look outfit. like? Oh, it's like purple, and like his crotch is there, and it's you can well, see it. Yeah, like, what do you mean you can see it? Like you, yeah, it's is it netting? Yeah, he's got this yellow netting that goes up over his chest like a V-neck over his crushed velvet light purple jumpsuit. Yeah. But then, for some reason, he's got, like, the reverse of a V-neck down on his dick zone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, if he were wearing, like, sort of, like, a midriff kind of, like, belly-showing outfit, but you move that down about a foot? <laughs> yeah. Well, for Big Ronnie, about two feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, as big as that netting space is, it still isn't big enough for Big Ronnie's dragon fucking schlong. Yeah, you can see you can see which leg he's tucked it down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
God, and his dance moves. The Damn way it. he's putting the moves on Janet on the dance floor <laughs> fucking kills oh, me every God. time. For all the moves that Ronnie puts on Janet here, she pretty much says no at the end of the night. Am I correct? Yes, she does. Yes. He tries to kiss her, and she goes, no. I think I'm in love with your son. I think I might be in love with your son, that's all. You're in love with Brayden? Yeah. Right now, Brayden's uh, best friend, Oinker, with the pig nose that we mentioned earlier, is, uh, well, he's found dead in his apartment. Does any, anybody want to talk about how no, he... Holy, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Fuck all of you. Well, why was he found dead, Mike? Because the greasy stranger killed him, and yeah. that is the grossest scene of the movie. Yeah. Easily. <laughs> Easily. Why you because say that? Because the greasy stranger strangler strangles him, and then takes off his pig nose, because it's not like, it's not like a, mm. his nose mm-hmm. isn't shaped like a pig nose. He has like an attached, a prosthetic pig nose. He takes it off, and you just see he doesn't have a nose. It's just like a, a hole in his face. A bloody and hole. In, it's a, a perpetual bloody, bloody yeah. hole in his yes. face. And and the greasy strangler puts his, like, it, this is the best effect of the shot, of the film. Like, this shot is. <laughs> it was pretty he, good, yeah seamlessly takes his greasy fucking finger and and t- touches like basically the rim of the hole of the nose and then puts the finger in way too far like uh. <laughs> it is disgusting i will agree see, with you see, there see i was okay with that shot that was, that was pretty well done <laughs> that was you're fine no problem monster. dipping a finger you are in a, a bloody monster. nose hole yeah no problem <laughs> big bats of grease dipping your hot dog in it no mike what is brayden vow to do for some reason they let Braden go in to like <laughs> look at the body it's 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 very weird but yeah so so Braden and janet hang out at oinka's apartment and Braden decides that he is going to investigate the greasy strangler it's good he's good because that's his buddy oinker he's gonna find yeah. out what happened not just investigate he's gonna take him down that's he's true gonna kill him he is. he's gonna kill the greasy strangler he brutally murdered the indian guy he brutally murdered oinker I'm going to make sure he never murders anyone else. I'm going to expose the greasy strangler. Then I'm going to kill him. Janet finally breaks down here and and falls for Big Ronnie. Well, if Big you Ronnie's will. a smoothie. He's a smoothie. Yeah. What are you going to do? And uh, Jay Braden does not take it very well. No, he does not take it very well at all. He He cries upstairs while they're... <laughs> Well, well, Big Ronnie's just munching away. Because <laughs> he could c- well, feast on that queen's ass all night long. Yeah, and he, he does. does. Say that. I could feast on that queen's ass all night long. Big Ronnie moves in on his territory here and... Uh, well, that's because what he's got down there, it looks like a massive mouse's head. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, we were you hoping talk. to skip that line? But, but you know, no, I mean, well, Janet could be. I mean, by easily. I mean, definitely her uh, big Ronnie's hootie tootie disco cutie. Mm-hmm. Oh god, hootie tootie disco cutie. You're a hootie tootie disco cutie. I'm a hootie tootie disco cutie. We got to talk about hootie, this hootie, hootie disco cutie, cutie disco cutie scene. Ugh. So hootie, I would I would like to cast hootie, I would like hootie, to hootie, disco cutie hootie, disco cutie disco cutie. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I love how how Janet's actress uh, I forget her name she gets into like saying this the hootie tootie disco cutie she's like swinging her hips and twisting her oh, yeah. she's into it it's 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 a pretty fun scene to be honest. Oh we'll have a little clip in here right now. <laughs> hootie tootie disco cutie hootie tootie disco cutie hootie tootie Disco cutie, hootie tootie, disco cutie. Okay, so Brayden writes his stories while they're doing it again. And they get together, and then there's like another car wash scene, and he cho- and the and Big Ronnie, the greasy strangler, chokes his f- best friend Paul to death, which we haven't even talked about. Paul, he's the guy who runs the car wash. He cuts his head off, mm-hmm. and tries to shoot a basket with it. <laughs> and then the Bra- then Braden calls the police to report that his dad is the greasy strangler. Am I right? Yeah, I don't. I, okay. I think mm-hmm. maybe no one cared about the fact that he was writing fiction novels. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> except right. He's for you, fiction. maybe. No, I, d- I don't care about that. It doesn't matter. Well, what? sounds like you might care. A little bit. 
He is. He has a dream. He wants to write fantasy novels and cyberpunk novels. I understand you identify with Brayden. I, I do. I, I, well, maybe just that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul. We've accomplished nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I figured. Well, what ha- What what about this private detective? Jay, are you done talking about all the stupid fantasy shit that doesn't matter? What? He's not a private detective. <laughs> what? How would they believe that he was a police detective or part of the police force? Because they're idiots. <laughs> yeah. How did they believe it's anything but Ronnie? Yeah. There's and no police to be found, so of course the police is just like Jody. And he call. Yeah, he calls the police. He tells Janet, "I called the police." They're coming tomorrow morning. He didn't look like a police oh, officer to me. He's yeah. He's got ridiculously long fingernails, oh, God. and he, he smushes it around in the grease. He he enters the scene. He climbs over this like short chain link fence in the front yard, like he's in the the musical Cats. Just <laughs> yeah. His name is Just... Joe. He says his name his name is Jody, right? Yeah. I am. Jody. And they just sort of talk, and, and he said, Jody, sa- Officer Jody says, Yeah. <laughs> Please end all inquiries here. And he yes. repeats that about 10 times. Please end all inquiries here. So we're on our own. Please end all inquiries here. Yeah, it's this is one of those scenes in this movie where you there's a there's a few of them, not many, but there's a few of them where it's like, OK, you don't know what you're trying to do with this film. Yeah. <laughs> you just thought this would be weird and it doesn't make sense within the film, but it was weird and it was I liked it, but it's just it's definitely weird. doesn't fit the context of the rest of the film. I would agree. And I like I, I would say that that the whole Jody thing is probably my least favorite part of it because it's so. It's so obvious that it's Big Ronnie. Like, come on. Like, he's got Kind of like how it's on. obvious that he's the Greasy Strangler, but oh, you know, we're but overlooking not, that one. But he's, he's not the he's Greasy not Strangler. not the Greasy Strangler. All right. So oh. this is where things start to get a little strange with this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah? Is it where it yeah, starts? Yeah, right here. Okay. Janet and Bray Bray finally get back together, much to my delight. And Mike, Ronnie, this is sort of, you know, a mirror where Ronnie doesn't deal with it too well. Yeah. Yeah. This is a real Black Lodge situation. Totally. Um, total David Lynch influence right here. <laughs> where <laughs> where <laughs> Brayden and Janet are lying in bed, bare ass naked. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're talking about how, you know, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> oh, God. Shit. Right. <laughs> and, and we get, like, it actually is really David Lynchian in the sense that, that yeah. <laughs> Ronnie kind of looks like Bob. Bob, he and, does, yeah. And so he's bare ass naked under the bed hiding, and he crawls out from <laughs> under the fucking bed. And he just almost is, like, going to murder Laura Palmer for a second. <laughs> right. Well, well, Janet has a great line here. She tells Ronnie... Don't hide under Braden's bed. <laughs> like she's like tough about it. That's Don't a hide great under Braden's line. bed. <laughs> I hope you put that clip in there, Paul. I, I will. Why not? Dad, were you here the whole time? Yes. Don't hide under Braden's bed. <laughs> I love that you did. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. I appreciate and they get sure. engaged. <clears throat> they get engaged. That's oh, the thing yeah, sends, that's what sends engaged. Ronnie over the edge. They're right. in bed and they get engaged, and then Ronnie loses it crawls out under the bed. I don't remember exactly what he does, but he leaves the room for a couple well, seconds. He ch- they chant Hootie Tootie Disco Cutie at, at right. Ronnie. Oh, yeah. This that time. sends Ronnie over the edge, yeah. And you were right about one thing, though, Dad. She is a Hootie Tootie Disco Cutie. Hootie Tootie Disco Cutie! Hootie Tootie Disco Cutie! Hootie Tootie Disco Cutie! You know what I would say to that, Jay? What would you say? Fair fucking play. Inside joke. Bullshit artist. Oh no, I know Bullshit what he does. Bullshit artist. Yeah, go ahead, wait. Mike. No, wait, I don't. It ruins. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> he leaves the room for a second and becomes the greasy strangler. He punches oh, his son right in the is. face. But <laughs> well, that's where you find out. That's the big reveal. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, tum- that's <laughs> the big reveal. Not the eight car wash scenes. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's yes. right. Big Ronnie finally admits he's the greasy strangler. But I love this scene because he comes in and just bitch slaps Braden across the face. <laughs> and the yeah. way Braden goes down is just like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and basically kidnaps Janet, right? Not yeah. basically. I mean, yeah, unless, does, unless yeah. you... Unless by basically you mean she's not a child, I guess. But otherwise, she is taken. She, she's woman napped. She is in need of a, a someone with some uh, specific skills. Yeah. Well, you know what, Mike? You know what, Mike? At this point, you know, Braden. Hey, Braden can be a greasy strangler too. You just watch him. That's he right. You know big, what? Of grease. He'll totally be a greasy strangler. He can be a greasy strangler. You're right. If fucking Ronnie can be a greasy strangler, which we has no idea was the situation. No idea. If he can do it, then why can't Brayden? I can get greasy too. I can be a greasy strangler too. You're not the only greasy strangler. I'm the greasy strangler too. Yeah, but he's they're setting up an epic confrontation between oh, be... greasy strangler. And greasy strangler. It's gonna be. I'm looking forward to this fight so much. Oh, the anticipation awesome. of slippery fists oh, whiffing boy. across each other's faces <laughs> is so high right now in this film for it's me. So great. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't quite know how to handle this. Brayden, as the as greasy strang- as son of the greasy strangler, mm-hmm. tracks down. <laughs> I want that movie. I want that movie. <laughs> oh god, damn it! <laughs> How does he track him down? Where where does he find the greasy strangler with Janet? Well, he just know. I think that he has a greasy strangler sense, so they know yeah. how to find each other. <laughs> this is sense. really where the mythology starts to build because Ronnie <laughs> is at the the movie theater that they always go to, and Braden shows up there to fight yeah. him, right? Or does he? Well, yeah. So, because Braden, I think I think the plan. I don't think this was the plan. I think Braden was going to fight Big Ronnie, but Chris, but, what uh, happens here? Yeah, it doesn't happen. There's going to be a showdown. I mean, Greasy Strangler, son of Greasy Strangler, sees GS choking yeah. Janet. GSOG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Does he kind of shove Greasy Strangler out of the way off no. of Janet? Not really. No. No, Greasy, I don't, okay, no. You know, I didn't quite catch what happens, but son of Greasy Strangler takes over the strangling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Greasy Janet. Strangler basically says, yeah. you want to get in on this? <laughs> and he's oh. like, yeah, sure. <laughs> he offers the victim to him. Totally, and, he, and her eyes pop out. She's dead. This has been shown. So, well, they, yeah. son of Greasy Strangler, sons of Greasy Strangles her. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> her eyes pop out. Then they watch a horror movie while, and they, as they pop those yeah. grease balls right into their mouths yeah. and eat them. And they both hit the naked and car then, wash. And Yeah. And then, the, yeah, they both go to the car wash, and then the strangeness really begins. Oh, my this, God. This at this point is where the movie lost me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I open floor here because I don't quite know how to deal with. Well, you know, we get well, some I, Ricky I Prickles. I got a yeah. question here. They're on the beach, and clearly they've repaired their relationship. Yes, and it's nice. Big Ronnie so is yeah. talking about how he got to hang out with John Travolta in New <laughs> yes. Orleans, and all that was going to happen, uh, and then Brain was born. Do you think there's any connection? Between the greasy strangler and the fact that John Travolta was in Greece. Oh, yes, mm. there is. Mm. You probably won't remember this, but when you were small, we stayed on John Travolta's luxury yacht in the Caribbean. Yes. Wow, I didn't think about it that way. Yes. I Could mean, John Travolta you, be wow. a greasy strangler? I guess are is you, my question. Ooh. Wait, are you doing a bit right now? I can't. No. I'm trying to. I want to play along, but are you doing? I'm a bit? not doing a bit. I'm asking the question. In this world, is John Travolta possibly a, a greasy strangler? Oh, you know, and I bet Scientology is covering up for him. I, I, are you guys genuinely doing this? What? What are you talking about? Michael St. Michaels, the guy who plays Big Ronnie, is John Travolta's hairstylist. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not, I'm not fucking kidding. <laughs> what the fuck is that? This is Michael St. Michaels, the guy who plays Big Ronnie, a.k.a. Yeah. <laughs> the Greasy Strangler. Uh... He was John Travolta's hairdresser, according to IMDb <laughs> trivia. But that's a fact in there that I think I believe. Why would you say that otherwise? So there's some definite <laughs> deep connections here. Yeah. So maybe John Travolta actually is a greasy strangler. <laughs> wow. 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 Well, it all comes together. Can't say I'm too surprised by that. <laughs> no. Well, that's fair. Yeah. Well, what I do like about this scene, though, when they repair their relationship, this really gets into they mention. 
Ricky Prickles in Act One. Right. Use Ricky Prickles by Act Three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or more specifically, rip off Ricky Prickles ears by Act Three. <laughs> Let's kill Ricky Prickles. Let's kill Ricky Prickles. Let's kill Ricky Prickles. <laughs> All right, what are we going to do with this last part? Yeah. It's so like the movie no, should it, have ended. There's there's no on the beach. All right. How about this? Hate, how about this? I Listen. hate the end of this movie. I all do right, not like it. Check this out. Check this out. Let's all let's do a little teamwork here. All right. We'll work. We'll work our way through it together, one sentence at a time. Okay. I will start. <laughs> okay. Um, father and son strangler agree that they are going to go after Ricky Prickles. Uh, Mike. Father and son. <laughs> Grease up and find Ricky Pickles in the woods. Chris. Father and son Greasy Stranglers finally corner Ricky Prickles in the woods and rip his ears off. That would, that would mean Jay. Okay. Um, yeah. They are then frolicking through the forest. <laughs> and, uh, and they come upon hand hand. themselves tied to trees or, or posts. They So they're frolicking. They look down. One sentence. Okay, and I'm just repeating the sentence because it's this is where it goes okay. off the rails. Frolicking <laughs> through the forest, come upon themselves tied to trees or posts. I don't remember which. In front of a firing squad. In front of a firing squad, and they witness themselves get executed by multiple, multiple bullets directly into the chest and stomach area and witness themselves uh, get killed, Mike. Which is a heavy-handed metaphor for the fact that they have lost themselves within the Greasy Strangler personas and have watched themselves, normal-ish selves, die and can never return to that persona that used to be them. Mm -hmm. Chris. It's them. They're the greasy stranglers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mike, so if that's the metaphor, what comes next when instead of dying when being shot multiple times, their the tops of their heads yeah. bust <laughs> open yeah. and colored streamers oh, pour out God. while they're still alive? Uh, well, Jay, you've missed a, uh, the, the most important part. The colored streamers are just the celebration of the fact that the grease has been unleashed from their heads because a giant fountain of grease from each of their heads pours out, symbolizing and signifying the fact that they are the, the grease is on the lease, baby. It's out there. It's <laughs> and nothing Wait. else. Ugh. Nothing else could be. It didn't rhyme. I wanted to say loose, but it doesn't rhyme with grease, guys. <laughs> it's on the lease. You can rent the grease. For for eight hundred and fifty dollars a month, you can rent the grease. <laughs> the but grease no, that's is what on it the symbolizes. Lease. The grease Ugh. is on the grease is unleashed, and like it's out there, and that's all it's going to be now. Their their mortal bodies are gone. They're now permanently greasy stranglers. There only be grease. That's what's in the universe now. Okay. Wait, you don't believe that metaphor? <laughs> I'm fine. not saying it's good. I don't no, care for the fine. ending of this film. It's fine. It's just what that's what it is. There's no way so, that's not what that is. If the greasy versions of themselves run off a of frame from that, you think surely that's the end, right? Like, that's the last shot, right? Like, that's it. No, they go diddle each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, what's the, what's the last shot? I don't know. I didn't write it down. I don't care. <laughs> I don't even remember. Yeah. It's just them looking at the camera and snarling, isn't it? And they have spears. They're Ooh. they're hunting with spears now. <laughs> yeah, and they well, creep they... up to the camera. It's like yeah. oh, what? Yeah, right. Well, because oh. they've lost their civilized selves. They oh, died. Mike, just stop. I'm they're not even now, kidding. You know that's now, what I know. It's fine. Fizzlers. It's fine. Just just please. Okay, I have <laughs> one final question for everyone, and I want ever everyone's opinion on this real quick. Uh huh. Is there room? In the Greasiverse, for for more, <laughs> will we will we ever oh. see the Greasy Strangler strikes again? I don't know. Ask Elijah Wood. To fucking produce this thing. What? Did Why he did? 
Yeah, yeah, he produced, produced, in the, yeah. Elijah All right, Wood I'll call him up. This. I'll call him up. Yeah. All right, Paul. Um, okay, I'll give you what I want to happen in the Greaseverse next. You'd think you'd want Son of Str- Greasy Strangler, right? That's That's the most thing. obvious option. I want Bride of Greasy Strangler. I oh. want Janet. I want Janet to have come back to life. Hell yeah! <laughs> and have grease streaks in her hair. <laughs> exact her revenge. Yeah, and then she re- enacts her revenge on the Greasy Strangler instead of Greasy. Wait, Strangler. wait. Well, Mike, Mike, you don't want a, a Ricky Prickles focused movie called Husband of Ex Wife of Greasy Strangler <laughs> with sausage that's jabs. Good, that's yours. I love it. I want. I want Ricky Prickles a Greasy Strangler story. <laughs> 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 Rating time. The first time I watched this movie, I had a grin on my face literally the entire 133 minutes. Or not 133 minutes, that would be awful. Uh, 100, <laughs> one hour and 33 minutes. I would just, I'm just curious, like, if you guys, Chris, I knew that you, I know that you threw up in your mouth a little bit. But mm-hmm. Mike and Jay, what were, what was your general reaction the first time? You saw it. And Jay, I also know that you watched it with your wife. What did, what did she have to say? No, 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 no. She walked in on a very, very innocent part of the movie, if there is one, and was like, what is this? And just left. <laughs> like, not even saw five minutes of it. She's Dang out. it. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I Mike. tried, but. Uh, well, I mean, I've seen this a couple times before. Right. Um, but the first time I saw it was at a B-movie mania night at The Native in Chicago. Oh. Come every Ooh. second and fourth Sunday. Uh, we watch two B-movies, and then sometimes we get crazy and we do a third extra, extra movie at the end of the oh, night. Oh, I see. And so, so Zafar, the bartender, one of the bartenders there, shout out to Zafar, I know he listens, um, he, he was like, we have to watch Greasy Strangler. And I'm like, fuck, Paul has been bugging me to watch this movie. <laughs> so You watched I'll, it at a bar? I had a bar with people in it. <laughs> That's a bad idea. And the sound oh, on. The sound is on. This isn't oh. like a, a, a bar with, with just captions on the TVs. This is fucking blaring sound. Bullshit artist. Yeah, I and call so, bullshit on that. Nope. Bullshit <laughs> artist. Um, but no, no, no. Uh, my face, uh, you know, I, A, I was co- pretty drunk by then, but my a big smile on my face. I mean. Okay. Cool. You'll, you'll hear my opinions with the review, but... Um, Mike, why don't you kick us yeah. off? What do you give oh, right. The Greasy Strangler? This movie is complicated. Right. Uh, <laughs> now, not in plot-wise. Like, no. The, the movie is very straightforward. It's... I read a review that someone put, and they called it an unsophisticated John Waters film, and I agree with it very <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah. Um, but, that being said... If you like absurdity and gross out humor and aren't <laughs> aren't deterred by people <laughs> <laughs> saying gross things, not just like physically gross, but there's like raising, I don't really did the raising point, the their part, ass into the air to fucking no, fart in no, their son's I've face. I've seen Ace Ventura. It's fine. The, 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 the gross, but I gross the grossest scene is honestly when they were talking shit about Janet. Uh, and I know that's part of the characters. They're both they're both terrible people, so mm-hmm. it's fine. But they, anyway, if you can get through that humor, that kind of stuff, um, then fucking check this out. Like, <laughs> I have to. I'm rating this twice. I'm doing two ratings for this. Uh oh. If if you want to see something gross and weird as shit, if you like gross out humor, and you want to test yourself. Fucking eighty eight, eighty eight. Okay. For this. Wait, what are we uh, rating this in? Oh, oh yeah, yes, Paul. I'm sorry. Uh, again, my Russ. My, well, my... I know what it is. It's 88 bullshit artists. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can do that if you want, yeah. But the official rating is uh, one out of 100 hootie tootie disco cuties. <laughs> All right. So, so if you like gross out humor and you can handle it, 88 bullshit artists. But if you can't, if you are grossed out by literally anything, anything... One hootie tootie disco cuties. <laughs> what? Do not, wa- do not watch this movie. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my god. Well, that's not uh. the first time that you've done two ratings. You just you have this sort of a split thing that where you just can't 
Well, it's like the greasy strangler Mike rates one, right. and then Mike rates <laughs> well, one. I, I am Big not Mike. the greasy strangler. What's that dripping guys? out of your hair, Mike? Is that what is, Listen, that? is that hair gel? Look at guys, let, hold on. Let me finish this uh, straw burrito here real quick. Oh boy. Ooh. Mike's the straw burrito strangler. <laughs> God. It needs more straw burrito. That's awful. <laughs> Why don't people put straw burrito in coffee? Oh. All right, Chris, I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about this. Oh, God. All right. Well, you know, this is five minutes into this movie, I had the sudden <laughs> epiphany that this is the most Paul Brooks movie I have ever heard of or seen. I don't know how to feel about that. Oh, God. Oh, it is... Shit. Nothing about this surprised me that you would pick a movie like this, Paul. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I've seen it one and a half times now. Okay. And there's just... So, I mean, there are lots of really great quotes, but I, I don't it's even okay. know. I'm gonna. You can do it. All right, well, you know, I'm just going to give you the rating and let that speak for itself. <sighs> 75 Hooty Tooty Disco Wow. Keys. Jeez. Wow. Holy That's way cow. higher than I thought. <laughs> Pulling a yeah, switch or not what I was this, expecting. This, this was kind of a fun movie. I would like to watch this again with people. I don't know if I could sit through it by myself again. Oh, people would be but, great for this. But with, with people, this would be a fantastic thing to watch. Just to, if only to watch their faces. Yeah, much like Malort, right? Like you said. Yeah, it's, 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 the, it's cinematic Malort. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> Yes, you inflict it on people. That's how you, <laughs> yeah, you exactly you inflict it on people. But once you choke it down once or twice, it's not that bad. That's right. I love you, Chrissy. I love you, <laughs> Jay. Hey, you got a, a real nice uh, enclosed porch area in your in your backyard. How about a little greasy strangler night sometime? <laughs> uh, well, there'd be some very specific circumstances that I would do that. Yeah, um, Aaron would have to be out of town. Probably, <laughs> she would never stand for that. What do you What um, do you rate the Greasy Strangler? Oh man, okay. So I I got I think I wrote more for my actual review this time than I may have ever have for another movie. Wow. Um, I, I will first say I I do like many of the elements of this movie. I think yeah. th a lot of the weirdness I'm down with. It's fine. But I also wrote, I can't wait to never watch this movie again. <laughs> like, it, it really is, like, I, I compared it to Napoleon Dynamite. But, like, the part of that is, like, Napoleon's weird interacting with, like, a mostly normal world. And that's kind of where, like, the humor comes out. Like, every single Ugh. character in this movie is uh. weird. And it's all just weird for weirdness <laughs> sake. I just feel mm -hmm. like it's trying too hard. Like, I didn't get a lot of meaning out of a lot of it, uh, which is, you know, it's a comedy, it's gross out, whatever. Yeah, like, I, I just, it's just not my thing, man. Like, I, it didn't, didn't click with me very much. But again, wow. like, I feel like the elements were there. Like, so I did like a lot of the elements. It just added up. I'm like, it, I just kept looking at it. I'm like, how much longer is this thing? And it's not a long movie. <laughs> There's too many just damn annoying scenes for me. Like, I just got really annoyed by a lot of it. Okay. So, uh, but so that said, uh, I'm gonna just go uh, 51 disco cuties. 51, <laughs> just getting it over that threshold of just. Just barely. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe there's circumstance. I wouldn't say never watch it again. I might, I might, but not in very many circumstances. <laughs> Got it. All right, Polly. What about you? Well, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I, Mike, you definitely touched on something that I 100% agree with. And unfortunately, my rating is going to uh, get knocked down because of it. The last five minutes completely, completely yeah. lost me. Yeah. Um, I thought everything was so much fun. Like I said, I had a grin from ear to ear during this movie. But then you get into the last five minutes and you're just like, what? I thought that they could have actually ended it on the beach and sort of taken it in a... Like, done a thing where they you can tell that they're um, bonding over going to get Ricky Prickles, but you don't actually see any of that. I thought that would have yeah. been a much better oh, ending. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I did the whole thing where I decided on my rating before I heard, you know, any of what your guys was going to be. I decided days ago what it was going to be, and it was 75. Hootie Tootie Disco Cutie. So I'm going to roll with Chris <laughs> here and yeah, uh, yeah. stick with that. 
So there you Hootie, go. Hootie tootie disco cutie. Hootie tootie disco cutie. Hootie tootie disco cutie. Hootie tootie disco cutie. Uh, I'd I, I like to say, I'd like to point out this, guys, that this was the director, a, a Scottish, I believe Scottish gentleman. Yeah, what's his name? We, sh- we should mention uh, that. Jim Hosking. Okay. Uh, this, so this is his first movie he's ever made. Jesus uh, Christ. And he has a second movie that had came out last year, end of last year, and I really want to see it. Oh my God, what's it called? It's called The Evening with Beverly Loughlin. Oh, yeah. It's got a lot of the same actors as this one, too. Uh, it, uh, What? It does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This movie stars <laughs> Aubrey Plaza, Emile Hirsch, Jermaine Clement, Matt Berry, and Craig Robinson. Like, what? fucking... Jeez. It, it looks good, it, actually. What? It does look good. It looks really good. I didn't realize... I, I, I saw the trailer for this and thought, I really want to watch that. And then while rewatching this tonight, looked up the director and saw this shit and went, oh, fuck, that's that movie. I might rent it tonight and just watch it. <laughs> like, I don't All right, see well, it. I'll see you guys you know, for kidding. season four. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who's next. I, I, I'm not on this show anymore. Yeah, Who the hell's Paul, next? Well, Paul, first of all, I really appreciate the before. It's my turn, Paul. Okay. My turn, but I, w- I want to say cool. I really appreciate the fact that you're coming back full time to get back into this to help that us finish really up the great. season. Uh, Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate that, Paul. But sorry, I'm going to have to evict you. You're evicted. Oh, okay, I'm going to have to fair. evict you. That's you're fair. you're evicted. Paul. You're evicted you're from evicted. the podcast. Wow. Yeah, hey, you I don't call bullshit, bullshit on that. You're evicted. Hey, you know what? That's horseshit, hey, Paul. <laughs> Paul, we said when you did this podcast, you need to make it greasy, and it's not greasy enough. So hey, you're hey you know what, Jay? You know what? H O R S E S H I T new word A R T I S T horse shit artist On the next episode of B Movie Mania for my last pick of the season I had something complete. I had it down to about three or four other picks. I couldn't, didn't know quite what to uh, what to choose for this. So I thought long and hard about this, and then I watched an episode of B Movie Mania on YouTube. Yeah, you did. Can TV in Chicago. Oh wow! And and I saw and part of the set. There's a bunch of movies just kind of Uh-oh. plastered all over the place. Uh-oh. And I saw one in particular. Don't do that I it. Thought looked kind of good. Don't do it. So. I've never seen this movie before. It sounds stupid, but I just love the name. So <laughs> you can watch this on Amazon Prime, but we're going to watch Craw. Craw! <laughs> no! Craw? Craw the Sea Monster on Amazon Prime. Oh, f- you've picked two kids' movies in a row. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I have no idea what this movie is. I just love the name so much. Craw! Craw! Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! I, I'm I'm sad to admit we never review Craw on the TV show, so that's <laughs> perfect. I was I was a little worried about that, but I saw it over Mike's shoulder. I thought, I thought I, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if this is available anywhere. And God damn it, it's it's on Prime. You thought Craw? Craw! <laughs> By the way, uh, while, while we're on the subject. We would love for you guys to tune in to B-Movie Mania, the TV show with me and Mike, which airs every Thursday on Can TV Channel 19 Chicago. If you're in the Chicagoland area, you can check it out there. If That's not, right. Mike, where else can you check it out? On YouTube. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, and you may, you may already subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have season one episodes. We're getting season two up real soon. We've got weird shit. If you want to hear Paul do erotic fan fiction to Fire and Ice, <laughs> Ralph Bakshi's Fire and Ice, it is fucking amazing. It's on there. It's really good. Um, <laughs> you can watch it there, and we're releasing them the Friday after uh, episodes air on uh, you know on YouTube. So, I don't do the I don't I don't do erotic fan fiction on the TV show. 
No, not on the TV show, but check out the episode of the TV show. It's really, really good. It's it's me and Paul, and we okay. we get we get real. It's fucking really good. We do a lot of weird <laughs> shit. It's very fun. Um, but guys, I know we're trying to like, you know, panhandle our shit, but I just want everyone to know how to find Craw because it's spelled. <laughs> K-R-A-A exclamation mark. <laughs> the Sea Monster is the name of the movie. It's Craw the Sea Monster, but it's K-R-A-A, which is not how you think you'd spell the word Craw. <laughs> which is probably what caught Chris's eye. And let me tell you right now, I'm looking on IMDb, it's got 3.1 out of 10, so this is going to be a fucking doozy. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's just put a link to it uh, down below under this uh, yeah, episode right you here. You know what? Yeah, we'll have it up here for you, for you to check it out. Craw! Well, anyway, Anyway, Jay, Jay, you, where could where could people buy uh, t-shirts if they want them? Uh, on our website, bmoviemania.com. We have all different designs and comfort levels. They're all comfortable. They're a- <laughs> I want an uncomfortable level t-shirt. <laughs> you could get an uncomfortable one. You could get it small if you want, or you could get it large. Jay, what, what can people do to help uh, pass on and promote the podcast if they like it? Oh, well, you can go to your favorite podcast service where you're probably listening to us right now and give us a kind uh, rating and uh, some stars or comments and stuff. Oh, my God. I might fucking record us at an hour and a half. Fuck me. Hootie tootie. <laughs> disco cutie. Hootie tootie. Disco cutie. Hootie tootie. Disco cutie. Disco Bullshit artist. Bullshit artist. Horseshit artist. Shit. Artist. Check my cheeks. Cat shit. <laughs> Tiger shit. Lion shit. Duck shit. Walrus shit. Penguin shit. King penguin, King penguin shit. shit. B U double L S H I T. New word. A R T I S. Bullshit artists. I love you, Paul. Bullshit artist. 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 You, sir, are a horseshit artist. I call bullshit on that. Check my cheeks.